All right, thanks, uh, thanks for the previous presentations. Share some common points of ours, but with a totally different methodology. So uh, my name is Chen Song. I'm from uh, University at Buffalo, the State University of New York. So today I'm going to give a presentation uh, of our work, smartphone-based side channel attack against 3D printers on behalf, on behalf of our team. So 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing is one of the hottest topics in recent years. <coughs> As an evolutionary technology, it can easily transform a digital design to a real printed object easily and quickly. And what's the principle of 3D printing? So traditional manufacturing encounters a lot of challenges when uh, trying to fabricate complicated designs. That is when people start to think, if it is so hard to build as a whole, then why don't we do it layer by layer? So given a design, we slice it into multiple layers, and in each layer, there's nothing but a set of 2D controls. So the principle, the, this principle grants 3D printing a unique feature. It is completely structure-free, independent of the design complexity. So today, up to now, 3D printer is more and more accessible to everyone. Like you, can, you only need to spend a few hundred dollars to own one, print whatever you want at wherever you like. Uh, according to the report, uh, the global 3D printing market is going to reach uh, $21, billion, uh, $21 billion by 2020. So uh, 3D printing is actually reaching every corner in this world right now. So uh, in the industrial field, 3D printing helps to generate products from the smallest joint to the highly functional unit. And in the healthcare, people using uh, human-friendly human material to build tools such as uh, such as hearing aid or two, sp uh, two sprays. So remember the structure free attribute, the, pr uh, the printed product can be perfectly fit into your own body. And in the aerospace, uh, this engine, this engine is actually the first jet engine printed complete, uh, entirely by 3D printer. And it helps to generate a lot of complicated parts on the, on the, jet, uh, on the jet wing. In the biomedical, scientists move on and uh, use the real tissue to grow the living organ, uh, although not yet, but um, printing a fully functional heart is in the plan. Also, in the ministry field, 3D printing helps to generate, helps to build high-tech helmets to protect the soldiers as well uh, as the shooting guns, uh, which was also brought up in the previous presentation. So th this shooting gun is uh, the first gun uh, completely printed by a 3D printer, and it passes all the shooting tests. So regardless of the application differences, all those designs share some common points. It is that all those 3D printing design files are highly IP sensitive, Oops. IP sensitive, and some of them directly links to the user privacy. So which means those design files should be kept confidential. But is that the case? So an interesting pro uh, question is, is the current 3D printing system uh, safe from attack? So motivated by this, we, uh, we explore an, an exclusive side channel, uh, side channel attack in the physical do domain, aiming to obtain the IP design uh, printed on the 3D printer. So, so here, uh, I, we specifically refer to the IP design, the Chico Fire, according to the industrial standard. So the general principle works like this. Uh, GCRO, a GCO file contains everything about the object. It has a set of instructions to tell the printer uh, what to do in each, uh, in each step. So if we are able to monitor the entire process and, uh, uh, and predict, uh, somehow get to know what the printer is doing in each step, we're going to able to reconstruct the continuous trajectory uh, as well as the, the entire object and reconstruct the G code file, which is the IP. So therefore, our approach involves three main steps. The first one is side channel detection. Uh, what are the side channels we're interested in and why? In a second, sta in, uh, in a second step, we want to predict the printing status. So how do we build a connection between the side channel as well uh, and uh, build a connection between the side channel and the printing operations. In the last step, we're going to, based on the prediction we got, we 
uh, how can we reversely reconstruct the uh, G code back. So in the first step, uh, as a physical system, as a phys uh, physical system, 3D printer gener generates multiple side channels. Uh, particular, particularly in this world, we will be interested in the acoustic uh, side channel as well as the magnetic one. The reason for that will be further explained in, the, in step two. So how to detect the side channel? The professional devices is al always the first choice, can be always be the first choice, but they're just too eye-catching and can be uh, really conspicuous. So do we have any options? Of course, the smartphones. As a, as a most pervasive daily device, it has reached uh, reach onboard sensors and the launching barrier is really low. This is a figure that shows the experiment setup we use in, in practice. On the, on the left side, there's a 3D printer. As you can see, the platform moves along the Z axis to control the layer movement. And uh, the, the header, the printer header is positioned on top of the printer. It can only move in the horizontal plane along either X axis or Y axis. So during the printing process, we can simply play, place a smartphone next to the printer while simultaneously collecting the side channel we're interested in as a background, as a background service. You can barely notice it. So in the second step, we want to, uh, based on the side channel data, a side channel we collected, we want to uh, predict the printing, uh, corresponding printing status. So uh, based on the pr uh, 3D printing mechanism, the operation, 3D printing operation, can be generally categorized into uh, these types. And the, the, uh, hierarchy, uh, the, the hierarchy tree on the right shows the relationship among them. So we will go step by step. So first is a di directional movement. It refers to the uh, opposite direction uh, movement in either x or y, y direction. So um, the header movement, uh, the header movement is controlled by the step promoter. The working principle of the step promoter is shown in the middle. Uh, you can see by activating the electromagnets in a certain order, the the rotor uh, in the center can be extracted and rotate in a certain direction. So this process generates the magnetic side channel. And if I reverse the rotation, the side channel is going to be reversed correspondingly. So this is the observation we get. Uh, we let the header move in opposite directions in each axis, x and y axis, and different colors respond to the opposite direction. As you can see here, there's a strong and clear connection between the magnetic side channel and the opposite directional movement. Next, we need to know whether the header is along the x axis or y axis. So uh, for the sake of accurate, uh, accurate control, the 3D printer specifically applied different bell pulley system for those two, uh, two movements. Uh, as a result, the acoustic, uh, the acoustic signal is different in both the temporal domain and the spatial domain. Spatial domain. For the header movement, the, there is actually two types. Uh, it can be further divided into two types. When the header is uh, doing the actual print, it will move at a, uh, uh, a constant but very slow uh, printing speed while extruding the material. But there are some, uh, there are some cases when uh, the contours are, dis uh, are disconnected and the header needs to jump from one position to the other. So in this case, in order to uh, save time and avoid the streaming effect, the, a very high, extremely high alignment speed will be applied, so which results in a much higher amplitude in the acoustic domain. So for, for the last one, the layer movement, we need to know whether the header is still doing operations in the current layer or the current layer is finished and the printer is moving the platform along the Z-axis to the next layer. So because of the, different, the difference in working fre uh, frequency and working load, as well as the accuracy requirement, the 3D printer actually apply a, to a completely different transmission system for the movement in the z-axis. To be specific, the least growth system is applied. So as a result, we can observe that distinguishable, uh, distinguishable features can be observed in the temporal and spatial domain for X, Y, Z movement, respectively. 
So overall, we build a, a training and uh, prediction system. So in the training, we, uh, we train a model based on the segments of different uh, primitive movement uh, according uh, with regard to the specific features we mentioned. The frame size, the frame size is based on the empirical knowledge. So after the model is trained, given any uh, incoming unknown segment, we go through the hierarchy tree uh, uh, layer by layer and determine, finally determine wh what kind of primitive movement it belongs to. Then in the end, we will have a set of predictions in the time series. So this is a list of the features we uh, mentioned about. So in the, in, the, in the third step, we need to, given a set of printing status predictions in the time series, we need to reversely convert it back to the G-code. So according to uh, the 3D printing mechanism and as well as the G-code protocol standard, we, uh, we propose a set of algorithm to convert it back. So, over, uh, so above are the methodology of our side channel attack. So uh, next, we're gonna evaluate the effectiveness of our, of our approach. First, we wanna see uh, how accurate our primitive, each primitive model is. So we train and validate uh, each primitive model based on thousands of uh, segments, and the overall accuracy is around uh, 95%. Then we would like to see how our uh, reconstruction approach can, be, uh, can perform uh, ba uh, based on the real shape. So before that, we would like to first define a similar, uh, similarity matrix to, uh, uh, to compare the shapes, whether they are similar or not. So given two, uh, two series shapes, suppose the red one is the original one and the black one is the reconstructed uh, reconstruct one. They're uh, exactly identical, but with some offset. So uh, some traditional distance, such as Euclidean distance, will return as uh, a value larger than zero in this case, but this is not what we want. We're actually more interested in the relative similarity instead of the, the absolute one. So we propose a mean tendency error, which is based on the calculation of formulation below. Uh, in this case, in this case, the MET, uh, MTE will be zero. So we first test our approach on a uh, uh, regular shape. It's a four-layer rectangle uh, rectangle design. Uh, uh, s similar to the previous, the red one is the original uh, design and the black line is the reconstructed shape. We can see that in each layer is pre uh, fit pretty much well with the original one. So the general overall MTE is around 5.9%. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Next, we wanna test our uh, defective of our approach based on a uh, complex, more complex shape w involving multiple disconnected contours. So uh, as you can see on the left, the, uh, the, the black lines is actually the re reconstruction result in 10 layers respectively. Um, we average the result of 10 layers and uh, get the smooth version on the right side. So this is the uh, printed result of the original design and the reconstructed one. So as you can see, uh, you can barely tell the difference. So after that, we want to uh, ask three uh, questions concerning the practical, uh, uh, the practical, uh, practical feasibility. The first one is how does the frame size affect the model accuracy? So uh, we test the uh, accuracy of the model, uh, ranging, uh, changing the frame size from uh, 10 to 400 uh, milliseconds, and the, 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 the result shows that the, la the larger the frame size, the better the accuracy. It's, it's pretty much because the, there is more uh, information entropy involved. And the second one, does the smartphone distance affect the attack performance of our approach? And the answer is yes. We actually uh, r conduct the evaluation on different scenarios, ranging the distance from 20 to 40 centimeters. And as you can see, the performance, the reconstruction performance drops really fast. Then why is the case? <laughs> So uh, we believe that it is mainly because the magnetic uh, signal diminished uh, pretty fast, actually very fast against the increasing of the, of the distance. All right, the last question is the smartphone orientation required to be fixed. 
So thanks to the uh, thanks to the framework of the modern smartphone OS, the answer is no. Uh, it pr the, the modern OS, the modern smartphone OS, provide enough uh, sensing data to uh, for us to generate the rotation matrix. So based on this rotation matrix, we will be able to calibrate the raw uh, magnetic data into uh, into a new coordinates. So based on the result here, we will uh, we only find a small variation when we rotating the smartphone along the x, y, z axis of its own co coordinates. So, so what does it mean is that a real uh, carry out attack it can be practical. And one thing to note is that we only validate the magnetic side channel here because the acoustic data propagates in sphere and doesn't really affect. Uh, Ma uh, affected by the rotation of the smartphone. So overall, our work shows that the, the IP sensitive uh, designs on the 3D print printed by the 3D printer are not affected and can be stealed by the malicious attacker. And how can we defend it? So the first question is, what is a good defense? So it should be uh, at low cost and uh, more specifically to the 3D printer, it does it cannot compromise the printing quality. So traditional uh, uh, traditional masses, uh, how we're based masses can be employed like shielding or influencing the side channels. We are uh, particularly used in the attack, but extra, but it definitely will cause extra cost. So uh, in our work, we really want to em uh, highlight our our proposed uh, software-based method, which is uh, particularly particularly designed for 3D printing. So uh, there's two uh, two methods, dynamic pass planning as well as dummy task in in instruction. So to make it sure, the first one is trying to degrade the model uh, performance by randomizing the parameters in real time. Of course, the the, the randomized range should be within a r uh, rationale range to prevent the printer from uh, destroying itself. So the second one, the dummy task injection, is trying to spoof the model by randomly combining the, the operation and the configuration together. For example, I'm injecting the dummy uh, alignment task, but with a printing size. No material is um, no material is intrude, uh, extruded in that process, so it won't affect the uh, the overall design of the o the overall printed result. So because the 3D printing is structure free, the, 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 dummy uh, the dummy trajectory won't affect the printing quality. And the, the only overhead could be maybe the printing time is a, bit, a, li a little bit longer, but we believe that is accept acceptable in the current condition. So that is, uh, that is our work. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> So we have time for questions. Hello, uh, Andre Kosin, Firmware uh, Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I have two quick questions, if I may. Um, first is, uh, did you have any chance looking at, let's say, military standardization of uh, manufacturing processes, for example, like Raytheon and Lockheed Martin? certainly do not print on homebrew printers and certainly they have to obey some uh, military standards to be able to be government suppliers. This is one and how that would be like possible to attack those kinds of uh, high, high uh, standardization uh, printings. And second, uh, do you think that f as a defense mechanism uh, taking the G code and transform it randomly at every printing, it, uh, every printing of the same IP model to to generate random trajectory, but with the uh, end goal of the same shape, could be an effective way. Uh, okay. Uh, for the first question, I think uh, I do know that uh, for those military uh, companies, they apply more advanced 3D printers to uh, to build their uh, weapons or, or uh, to build their we weapons. But the point 